you having a challenge dealing with negative thoughts? Well, today I wanted to share my experience with this and some points that might help you start to deal with these a little bit more. Now, before we dive into today's episode, I wanted to just announce that I'm opening an opportunity to work with me personally. I'm opening up free spots to work with me if you're looking to start a business in a business coaching capacity. So you can find the links for that below and more on this later. Now, for me personally, with negative thoughts, this is something I've really had to step up, in, particularly in the last year. And I've started to create a, a blog actually around sort of like how some of my mental health has been impacted by uh, negative thoughts and how I've sort of dealt with it and some of the challenges. Because I think the more we can share with others, the more we can realize that we're not alone. Okay. And that's why I do this podcast. I want to kind of share where I've been, what I've gone through and what's allowed me to move forward. Now, if you're in a severe, I want to say this very clearly, if you're in a severe case of severe depression, anxiety, those kind of things, then do seek medical attention or professional attention, of course. Um, but I kind of wanted to share my my experience with negative thoughts because I know this can be a bit sensitive. Again, this is just me sharing personally how I've overcome some of these. Again, like I say, if you need serious support, do go and get that professional. So like I've started to see life as a personal trainer, right? You go to the gym, you get a personal trainer. That personal trainer is going to work you out, uh, make you work out. And then you're going to get fitter. You're going to get stronger as a result. Sometimes life decides to be a bit of a personal trainer to you. Emotionally, it builds you. It tests you. It really grows you. It pushes you beyond your limits. And what happens? As a result, we grow an emotional muscle. Now, it's not easy. Of course, it's not when you're in a moment. It can be really, really hard. And hopefully some of my points today are going to help. I just want to give you that perspective, though. Uh, and I've been at a point where I've been in a real seriously like dark place, really not feeling good about stuff. Um, and I've discovered how I've what picked me out, up, out of some of that, that dark place and what made me perhaps not feel so good and not rise up as much. Life will test you. If you expect life to match your pitches to be happy, then you need to revise that approach because if you're expecting the external world, everything outside of your own mindset, your own psychology to go right, then you know that's never going to happen because life's going to throw all sorts of curveballs. There's going to be this beauty, there's blessings in life, of course there is, but life will test you, of course. And we also have a negative a brain if we don't train it our brain is wired to look out for danger it looks to keep us safe and when it doesn't perceive real danger it makes up other dangers instead so that's why it's really really key to train yourself now some people uh will you never know what's going on behind someone's mind but some people uh you know seem a lot cooler and calmer and that's because whether they're conscious to it or not they've often trained themselves to think in a certain way differently so i'm going to go into some ways you can start thinking differently now now ask yourself this how's it helping you doing the same things over and over again and expecting a different results well it didn't do anything for me so that's what i wanted to share today so the first thing with negative thoughts is observe them ask what's happening here and what meaning am I attaching to this? And even this is just going to start creating your awareness. When you start creating more self-awareness towards things, you start seeing sometimes the thought is just maybe a paranoid thought. It's just the thought that's, that's crazy. And when you just see it as thoughts, that starts reducing. Now, obviously, sometimes something really bad might have happened. You might be thinking about it, and it's not a case of blanking out the thoughts. But in more mild situations, you can start looking at, actually, is it... What's that thought doing there? And what does that, what actual meaning am I putting to it? Just ask yourself that question. So for example, if you're slightly triggered by something uh, you see maybe on the internet and then you're like, oh, that makes me feel really nervous, really anxious. It's like, what, how, what meaning have I just given to it? Ask yourself that. The second one is to change your breath to do some breathing exercises get into there's plenty of breath work out there there's Wim Hof the somatic breath work uh just look up breath work and 
breath work, changing your breath will really allow you to start thinking differently. I remember going for a really tough time, uh, sort of a breakup situation and oh, it was really horrible. And I was kind of, I was in bits and I just remember changing my breathing. And even though I was in a really dark place, uh, there's some other things going on in my life. I remember just doing the deep breathing and actually I felt calmer. I felt more connected. I felt more present. So changing your make getting into good breathing habits because we don't breathe properly we just rush through the day and we get in these stressful breaths most of us so start putting some conscious breath work into your day and then the third one is become conscious of and i talked about this in a previous episode but i re-emphasize it um be conscious of your habits through the day take an audit start writing down oh this made me feel good this made me not feel so good and then just start listing those things start noticing them like there's a particular thought you think and that makes you feel so good not so good and then is there perhaps a certain food that makes you feel good and then maybe there's a certain food that doesn't make you feel so good um it's no surprise at all that when you've you've had a serious amount to drink the night before as i've done many times that you get more anxious and more down because you've got alcohol as a present well there's actually a, as a depressant i said that very quickly not a present <laughs> a depressant um well, that can be given as a present people, of course. Uh, but there's also things you may have sensitivity to things like gluten. And you may start noticing, um, that's just one example, you may or may not. Um, but you may start noticing, actually, you eat a particular, you, oh, I felt a bit low after I had that snack or that food. Hmm, interesting, make a note of it. Because what that's going to do is start becoming more conscious of what's making you feel good and not so good. And then when you start evaluating that, you can start adjusting your behavior accordingly. I know for me, when I have too much coffee, as much as I like coffee, I get too anxious. However, a little bit of coffee is fine for me personally. Now, I've got an extra point for you as well. Um, and just before I get onto that, I wanted to touch on my one-to-one a little bit more. So I've got uh, a Three spots available for one-to-one business coaching. So if you're holding yourself back with BS reasons like I'm too busy, I've not got around to it, and you want someone to push you to really get you over the edge to actually start that, you've been waiting to do it for a while, don't hold back anymore. Let's have a chat. It's going to be linked below to find out more information and you can book in your call. So my final point for you is... And this is what I found really useful. Fortunately, I've invested a lot in my life and um, I've made some great networks and great friends. And my typical like bunch of lab mates I go out with and everything like that, I've like, had some good times in my 20s and holidays and stuff. They're not necessarily always the best uh, people to talk to in terms of if I'm, I'm struggling or something. But I've made lots of friends in the personal growth who will call me out, who will listen to me. Um, but find a friend who you can voice to because... It's usually always someone in our life. And if you don't have that person, go out and join networks out there and just, and if not, you know, you got helplines like Samaritans and all sorts. Don't be ashamed to talk to someone, especially if you're a guy listening. I was so scared to air things, but when I'm more open and honest, that makes me feel my best. Even when I'm at my lowest, when I'm sharing out loud, that makes me feel uh, a lot better rather than keeping it in my own head. So sometimes I <laughs> uh, I leave a voice note that's like five minutes to someone, but I say as long as that's okay with them. So, or maybe even make a call. So finding someone you can start talking to, to about negative thoughts and pick someone who doesn't make you feel bad. Sometimes people are very well intentioned and they're nice and they're like, I'll listen to you. And then actually you feel worse talking to them because they come out of a load of advice that makes you feel worse. So make sure you pick someone that's good. And sometimes that might take a little bit of trial and error, unfortunately. You might talk to someone once and feel bad and think, okay, I'm going to talk to someone else next time. Um, Even people close to me have offered, and when I talk to them, I feel worse. So I've noted who to talk to and who not to. So that's what I've got for you today. Once again, I just wanted to mention my opportunity for you. I've only got three spots remaining for one-to-one business coaching, and I'll leave that linked below for that opportunity. I appreciate you for being here. You're improving other people's lives for being the best you. And remember, you are in control of your own self-esteem and confidence.